Bison Football Show with Coach Matt Ince. Brought to you by Gate City Bank and Pepsi. Welcome into the Bison Football Show with Coach Matt Ince. I'm Rob Hipp, the voice of the Bison, joined by Head Coach Matt Ince. Uh, Coach, a tough one here today. First half, team came out strong. Uh, but look, one game does not define this season, Coach. I just want to pull some of the, the positives to start from that first half. Well, yeah, we started fast. We played uh, relatively well on both sides of the football and, and got ourselves the lead. And going into halftime, uh, there was a number of positives. Uh, we need just to continue that. And, and you know, when you're playing a, a good team, you, you can't falter in the second half or get outplayed. The passing game, Cam Miller, very strong in that first half. We've talked about him every every game. He comes out 12 of 12, really 13 of 13 going back to the previous game. We'll talk a little bit more about him as the show goes on, but just his performance continues to develop, Coach. Did a really good job early and did a good job throughout the game, uh, making good decisions, uh, being able to communicate from the sideline in the huddle. Uh, it was a great atmosphere today here in the Fargo Dome, and uh, Cam continues to grow and expand, and his understanding of what we're trying to accomplish and, and his accuracy in the past game continues to, to be really, really good and really, you know, dynamic at times for us. Which everybody told me, get ready for the Fargo Dome. It was as advertised. This crowd buys a nation. Literally papers in our box were shuffling five false starts because of that noise in the first half. Just talk a little bit more about that. Uh, Bison Nation continues to impress uh, the support, the energy that they provide this football team and all of our uh, athletics, all of our teams here is second to none. And when this place is rocking like it was today, uh, it, it is very difficult on the opponents. Seems these games too always come down to the wire. Just so much history and tradition between these two teams uh, just these programs I mean what has it meant to you as a coach over the years it's always a hard-fought game and uh, very seldom has there been you know multiple score wins uh, we knew it was going to come down to the end uh, they played very well in the second half and made more plays than we did let's, let's take a look at first half highlights presented by Gate City Bank to Iowa here's Lipke and he's got a first down. Look at Hunter Lipke carrying the Jack secondary all the way to the SDSU 44-yard line. That's a gain of 12. Two guys are going to have a huge impact in this game. On first down, Miller rolls out. Mathis is open. He's got a first down as he cuts back inside and rolls down to the 30-yard line. A gain of 14 for Zach Mathis. Miller wants to throw. On the outside is T.J. Hart. Hart makes a move. Hart, touchdown, North Dakota State. The first of T.J. Hart's career. He'll throw on first down. That's Jaden Yonke immediately brought down on the play. Guess who? Michael Tutsi. Well, we've already seen the back and forth happen here early on in this game. Dom Canella will get his first carry of the game. And look at the hole for Dom Canella. Still on his feet. He cuts back to the outside and all the way to the Jack Rabbit 35-yard line. So the Bison are already at the Jack 35-yard line. Miller will roll out. He wants to go downfield. He's got a man that's caught hard again and pushed out of bounds inside the five. They mark him out at the six. It's first and goal. Miller will keep it himself. Cam Miller, touchdown, North Dakota State. That was quick. Miller to Hart on a touchdown. Isaiah Davis answered for the Jacks. And then Cam Miller on a touchdown run is our scoring. Play action here. Look at the time. Miller now will dump it out to Tameric Williams out of the backfield. He's knocked out of bounds after a first down at the 36-yard line. It's third and four. Miller fakes it. Lipke's wide open. Touchdown, North Dakota State. The touchdown maker is back in the end zone. Nine and a half remaining first half. 21-7. Granowski with time. And down he goes for a sack. Brought down Luke Wirtz. Cam Miller is split out. Payton will take this one, makes a man miss. He's still on his feet. Cole Payton out of bounds all the way to the 45-yard line. 47-yard line. It's second down and two. Miller wants it all down the field. That's caught inside the 10-yard line. Braylon Henderson. That's the reason that they weren't throwing the ball in that situation. Granowski, down he goes. Spencer Wagey. Let's take a look at first half stats presented by Nodak Insurance. 
Coach, we talked about that first half already. Team came out 99 yards on the ground, uh, held a very good rushing team in South Dakota State to only 60 yards. Isaiah Davis, not much of a factor in that first half. No, we did a good job of trying to push the ball to the sidelines. Our kids were swarming to the football defensively. Uh, we were able to, to hit some good runs, solid runs, stay ahead of the chains, and uh, that was usually that's a recipe for success, and you saw that early in the game. 181 yards through the air. I've already talked about Cam Miller's play. Uh, you came out with the passing game. It was very effective. Uh, he, we, we had a good plan. Uh, Tyler Roll and the staff put together a good plan, one that we thought we could take advantage of some things. They played a lot of corners over. Uh, we, we knew the pictures we were going to get. Cam had a great understanding of it. and uh, We were able to get some. They played those safeties low and, and down in the box, and we were able to get over the top a few times early in the first half. You always talk about moving the chains to 12 first downs in that first half, Coach. Yep. It's, it's, you know, hopefully trying to stay time of possession, you know, just keep our offense on the field, all part of, you know, a, a solid plan. We'll have the second half highlights presented by Gate City Bank right after this. Teamwork. Talent. Dedication. Leadership. These values that win championships on the field also build community, improve lives, and make a difference every single day. For you, for our neighbors, for our community, for a better way of life. Gate City Bank. is on and it's about to get loud powerful and playful delicate and precise bold and carefree it's the way you move and it moves us to deliver care for your whole family to provide options beyond the expected to help you leave pain in the past and find your way forward Orthopedics and Sports Medicine at Sanford Health. Bison Nation, this is head football coach Matt Entz. With all that goes into leading the Bison to victory, the last thing I want to worry about is the clothing I need to look and feel my best. I shop at Halberstadt's West Acres because I trust that they provide me with everything I need for meetings at the office, press conferences, and casual Bison attire. With plenty of options for sport coats, shirts, denim, suits, shoes, and accessories, I'm confident that when I need anything and everything menswear, Halberstadt's West Acres has me covered. Welcome back to the Bison Football Show with Coach Matt Entz. I'm Rob Pipp. Coach, second half, uh, obviously things a lot tougher. Um, it was kind of a tell of two halves. We talked a little bit about that earlier, but just tough to execute. Talk a little bit about that second half, Coach. Well, I, I thought, you know, South Dakota State did an excellent job. They, they outplayed us in the second half. Uh, we can't continually get behind the chains. I thought there was more of that in the second half, uh, you know, first and 15, second and 20, uh, those are tough to recover from. Uh, you, all of a sudden you limit your playbook and you limit your ability to, to, to get back to your base offense. There was a couple of plays, one specifically that stood out to me on a positive note. 
South Dakota State's driving down. They get down to the one-yard line, and it was a third down. Big stop. They come out. That forces a field goal. That was a critical uh, moment in that second half, Coach. Well, it is. Anytime you can hold your opponent to field goals down deep in the in the red zone like they were in the goal line, uh, that's a big play. But, uh, you know, we, we, we routinely talk about that field goals won't get you beat. Um, we got to limit our limit the opportunities that our opponents have in the red zone uh, but that was a that was a positive right there loss always tough sometimes part of the game you've got young men 18 to 22 years old and they'll get their heads down but this isn't on them coach what'd you tell them after the ball game well you know I I'm proud of them excited for them uh, we, we competed we played hard uh, a tale of two halves. We played really well at different times. Uh, we just didn't play well, and we weren't able to finish. And we got to do a better job. I need to do a better job of getting this group to play a full game. Uh, we've seen glimpses of really good football. Unfortunately, it hasn't been consistent enough, and uh, I'll take the responsibility for that. Let's take a look at second-half highlights presented by Gate City Bank. They can deliver that here after halftime. It's second down and four. This time, Amar Johnson driven down. Nothing doing that time. Nick Kubitz comes up with a play. Gronowski, and there's Kayser, and he throws it away. They want intentional grounding there as Kayser had him in the grasp. Second down and 13. Miller, look at the time. Wants to go down the sideline. Hart, did he stay in bounds? They say yes! Phenomenal down the sideline from DJ Hart. 21 20. Tamaric Williams fake there as Miller will head out in the flat on this reception. Looked like it was Hofstead on the catch. It was. Logan Hofstead comes up with a reception. He's only had one career reception prior to that one. On a first down and 10 from the 37 as Gronowski wanted to swing it out. And down he goes. Fumbled the ball. It's loose. The Cole Menz get it or not. It looked like it popped right to him. Miller. Mathis is open. Mathis with the reception and out of bounds. And a first down out to the midfield stripe. That was a little stop and go there for Zach Mathis. Let's take a look at final stats presented by Nodak Insurance. Coach, we talked in that first half just about the passing game. Cam Miller was finding receivers all over the place. Not so much in that second half as we know, but I still wanted to go back and highlight some of that. We talk about guys, uh, man, like Zach Mathis. He had another great game. DJ Hart really starting to find some life. He, I, I kind of said it, not being cliche, is the heartbeat of that receiving core right now. Talk a little bit about his play. Well, those guys did a great job, and you know we were able to hit some things on their – they played a little bit off at the corner position, some hitches, some darts some slants uh, and then you know DJ was able to get behind him you know kind of on a little bit of a stash concept that we run and that was a big play for us down here in the north end zone uh, early in the game but again Zach continues to, to make big catches out in the perimeter uh, and gets north and south and gets upfield. Bison finished up with 127 yards on the ground. Most of that coming in that first half. What was just really tough in this ball game with that rushing attack? Well, I think uh, I, I alluded to it earlier. We got behind the chains, and all of a sudden you limit yourself, and uh, all of a sudden the thing that you pride yourself on, or the things that you want to do going into the game, the plan that you had set, you, you got to sometimes throw out the window because it's all of a sudden becomes an extra long down in distance. Let's go now to Logan Campbell with our Nodak Insurance Player of the Game, Cam Miller. Logan. Cam, there was a point in the first half, you're 12 for 12 with completions. What was your mentality heading into this game? I'm just trying to play fast and take what the defense gave me, and I thought I did that. Um, you know, I made some poor choices in the second half. Um, I also let my emotions get the best of me, and that's my fault. Where do you think the momentum started to shift in this game? Um, probably after my penalty, after that um, excessive celebration. I shouldn't have done that, and I let my team down. And, um, and I'm sorry about that. Heading into the bye week, what's next for you and this team? Um, we just got to learn from this and grow from it. It's the only thing we can do now. Thanks, Kim. Thank Rob, back to you. Thanks, Logan. Coach, we've talked about Cam Miller. We yeah. continue to talk about him. Another phenomenal game, over 200 yards. I mean, he just continues just to be that force on the team. Just talk a little bit about his leadership and how he continues to develop, Coach. Well, it, it, time and more starts and more reps continue to, you know, 
bring about his leadership, bring about his confidence level. And so I'm super excited about where he's at. Uh, knowing Cam, he's frustrated because of the outcome of the game. And uh, so is another 119 guys on this football team right now. Uh, we're going to have to bounce back quickly and get back to work on Monday. He finished up 77% through the air. I mean, third consecutive game over 70%. He's finding targets. He's making things happen. He is. He's, he's, he's doing really well. Uh, and, and we're going to continue to lean on him as we move into the, the last quarter of the season. You know, talking just more about his leadership in our radio post-game interview, he made a comment like, this is on me. I wanted to pull that back because it's not on him. He played a heck of a game, and he, that just shows his leadership, Coach. Well, it, it does. I, it, I'll, I'll say more of the responsibility goes on me as the head football coach than ever on any of our players. Awesome. Well, Coach, appreciate you. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll take a look at the envy of the Missouri Valley Football Conference. Better starts with convenience. Better starts with trust. You can trust that your pre-approval is guaranteed on closing day, which is one less thing to worry about. Better starts with saving you money. No ATM fees and no minimum balances mean how you spend your money is up to you. Because at Gate City Bank, better starts with you. Gate City Bank, for a better way of life. I live for adventure. Whether it's playing professional football or the solitude of being in the great outdoors. Through all my adventures, one thing I do know, life is unpredictable and full of change. Thankfully, some things remain the same. Important things like service, quality, expertise, and trust. From my childhood to today, Shields has my trust because it has been right there with me for all my adventures. Shields, right there with you. Welcome back to the Bison Football Show with Coach Matt Entz. And in this week's Olaf Anderson feature, WDA-wise Dom Izzo, well, he talks about the newest game changer at North Dakota State University. It's a phrase you use, well positioned for the future. Describe that and what that, what that means. Well, it is. I mean, I, I think about the day I walked on campus. It was actually nine years ago today, which is kind of eerie. Uh, but at the time, it was like, oh, we need to go FBS football. We need to do all these things. And, and I really thought from a, I think we collectively thought from a, we weren't ready. From, a, from an infrastructure, from some staffing things, and, and I think we're in a much different position today. You know, Jack went through the long list of about $130 million of athletic facility project investments in the last decade. We're in a much different place than we were. You heard Coach Enns talk about it, and so I just think we're in a we're in a, we're a different NDSU than we were 10 years ago. You believe you are FBS ready now with this? Uh, well, you never know. You never know. I, I think I think I would put our facilities on par with just about anybody in the country. I remember when I was getting recruited. That's kind of one of the recruiting lines I was told is that I'd have, I'd have an indoor practice facility by the time I left, and you know they were talking about building it. You know that was back in 2017 yeah. now. So uh, just to finally now see it is is pretty nice. For the guys when they get a chance to get in here, what do you think the reaction? Is going to be upset. For the guys who are going to be here beyond you after. Yeah, season. I think guys are going to be speechless right away. They're going to walk in and just try and take it all in. And um, I think guys are going to be really excited. I think it's really going to be um, good for guys in like off season, even knowing that they got a place that it's not going to be 20 degrees like it is in the bubble. And um, that all the all the equipment and stuff that guys need will be in here and that they can continue to do stuff in the off season. 
great feature. And this facility, the Nodak Football Performance Complex, had a chance to go on Friday. The ribbon cutting coach, a world class facility, not used just for football, but we're talking about the athletics as a whole. Just talk about the importance of that facility. Well, it's a it's a game changer for all athletics here. Uh, year round development, uh, recruiting tool, of course, and then you know just. Preparing NDSU athletics for the ever-changing landscape of, of college athletics, but uh, what a great you know tool to have, and, and and hundreds of people were responsible for this facility going up, and uh, a lot of people locally, former players, former alumni, friends of the program. It's uh, uh, it was truly a, a, a group effort, um, and it, like I said, it's it's a one-of-a-kind facility, and uh, excited to get to use it here in the near future. I can tell you the energy it brings. Because when I walked in there, coach, I wanted to put on some flag football gear and run around. Didn't get a chance to do that. Right. Well, in this week's Great Clip, Great Question of the Game, brought to you by Great Clips, what's from Mavis in Moorhead? Coach, he asked, what do you and the players do on the off week? practice uh, not much different than than what it looks like we will try to find time to give our kids because of the timing of this bye week this this year being in week eight uh, give them a, a 24 hours 36 hours away from football uh, just to kind of decompress and then we can ramp this thing back up but uh, we'll dive right back into practice on Monday emphasizing a lot of young guy development and, and get a head start on our next opponent we'll step aside and take a break there's more to come on the bison football show with coach Matt Ince. This one's for every sports fan who just spent the entire game explaining to someone the entire game. You've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. This is Jack. Jack loves sports. And since he banks at Gate City Bank, he can show his spirit right on his debit card. Even better, Gate City Bank will donate $10 to his favorite local school. And when Jack's friends cheer on their favorite teams, those schools receive $10 too. Plus, Jack and his friends score every day with free ATMs worldwide. Now that's always a win. Gate City Bank, for a better way of life. When it matters most, count on the news leader, WDAY News. The main lodge at Maple Log Resort is a total loss. WDAY News reporter Matt Henson joins us from rural Becker County. Stories that matter. Seems like the perfect storm for child care centers. We have way too many kids and not enough spots available. Covering news, weather, and sports. Cullen Holt, live at Benson Bunker Field House. Turn to the news leader, WDAY News. For decades, NODAC Insurance Company has been serving our state's residents in good times and challenging times. We come together for the greater good, from simple acts of kindness to company-wide efforts that make a difference in our community. It's who we are, rooted in North Dakota and ready to serve when it matters most. NODAC Insurance Company, agents with answers. When it matters most, count on the news leader, WDAY News. The main lodge at Maple Log Resort is a total loss. WDAY News reporter Matt Henson joins us from rural Becker County. Stories that matter. Seems like the perfect storm for child care centers. We have way too many kids and not enough spots available. Covering news, weather, and sports. Cullen Holt, live at Benson Bunker Field House. Turn to the news leader, WDAY News. Another rock and roll weekend.
burgers better with Pepsi. <sighs> when it matters most, count on the news leader, WDAY News. The main lodge at Maple Log Resort is a total loss. WDAY News reporter Matt Henson joins us from rural Becker County. Stories that matter. It seems like the perfect storm for child care centers. We have way too many kids and not enough spots available. Covering news, weather, and sports. Cullen Holt live at Benson Bunker Field House. Turn to the news leader, WDAY News. Welcome back to the Bison Football Show with Coach Matt Entz. I'm Rob Pipp. Oh, Coach, here he took the question out of my mouth. I was going to ask you, what do you do in the bye week? But, you know, you just mentioned practice. There's a lot that goes in. Some people think, okay, well, it's the time to rest. There is a little bit of rest, but just talk a little, a little bit more about that structure and what happens in the bye week. Well, early in the week, we'll dive into some self-scout and identify maybe what we haven't been efficient at, what we're struggling with, or how people are taking advantage of us uh, in different formations or personnel. Uh, we will start uh, preparation into our next week or our two weeks from now our opponent and then uh, you know we're going to emphasize the young guys quite a bit uh, we have a, a really good freshman class uh, combined with a, an excellent redshirt freshman class those guys need reps and uh, they'll be a part of practice every day this week that we emphasize those young guys because as we get into the into the last four to five weeks of the season one or two of those guys might need to help us on special teams and or offense and defense by week it's always kind of that time though where you sit and dwell on things how do you just kind of say hey guys wrap this one up we're we're gonna come back season's not over what do you tell the kids during the bye week just to kind of move on and get ready for the next week well we talk about improvement we talk about continuing to get better we talk about finding ways that we can grow and develop each day um, which sometimes is 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 tough to do uh, nobody likes to hear the truth uh, but sometimes the truth hurts a little bit and so got to just be a very transparent in our as we look at ourselves and as we go through that self-scout and find out what we need to improve on and uh, I, there's probably a, a number of things that are going to jump out at us when we look at it on film and paper coach as always appreciate your time and hey enjoy the bye week looking forward i'm going to miss football for a couple of weeks but it, it'll be good to be back with you coach i appreciate it thank you as always thank you for joining us and remember bison nation horns up and go bison Today's Bison Football Show with Coach Matt Entz has been presented by Gate City Bank and Pepsi. This has been an exclusive presentation.